Good morning. Good morning to you all. And a warm welcome to this embargoed virtual press conference on the findings of the easel, the Lancet Commission on protecting the next generation of Europeans against liver disease complications and premature mortality. I'm Thomas Burke, the Secretary General of the European Association for the Study of the Liver Disease, otherwise known as EASL. So EASL is a non-for-profit organization and has grown since its foundation in 1966 to over 4,500 full members from all over the world and a community of 25 thousand my easel followers. So easel is really the leading liver association in Europe with international influence, promoting research in liver disease, supporting wider education and promoting changes in European liver policy. We have an annual meeting that is well renowned in International Liver Congress. It's normally attended by around 1000 attendees. So why we're here today? We face that over the last 20 years, liver disease burden has continued to grow. Just to give you an example, the incidence of liver cancer, and liver cancer represents a long-term consequence of chronic liver disease, has almost doubled in the last 20 years. Whereas in contrast, the incidence of other solid cancers for which, for instance, preventive measures have been taken, has remained stable or declined at the same time. So the fact that liver diseases is often not so much a focus of attention and patients with liver disease suffer from the stigma that they themselves are to blame for the disease is probably an explanation for this fact. For this reason, the European Association for the Study of the Liver, ESL, and the Lancet, the most prestigious medical journal in Europe, commissioned this work to describe the current trend of liver disease in Europe with an outlook for the future, and in particular to describe action points that can then lead to a conversion of this trend and thus a reduction in mortality um, from liver disease in Europe. So the priority was really to identify barriers to the improvement of liver health and to identify the necessary solutions. It's now after three years of investigation and analysis, we are delighted to finally be here to share with you the key findings and recommendations coming from this Easel Lancet Commission analysis. Today, you will hear from our esteemed panelists and then we will open it for questions from, for you and from the media. So, but before we do that, I'd like to make some short remarks to set some context for today. And as my colleagues will allude to you today, liver disease, we call it a window to the future of the health of all Europeans going forward. So why so? Well, in addition to very specific liver diseases, you know, as viral hepatitis, autoimmune liver disease, or genetic liver disease, and all these, or most of these, can be quite effectively treated if diagnosed at an early stage, we are seeing a dramatic increase in metabolic-related liver disease called fatty liver disease. So there's an estimate that 25% of the Europeans are affected by fatty liver disease, and this is really a reflection, and we will explain it to you, of the metabolic health of the European population. And this fatty liver disease is also associated with other outside the liver disease burden, like cardiovascular disease. Moreover, you can perhaps also see a link between the COVID pandemic and the fatty liver pandemic, because these metabolic risk factors leading to fat fatty liver are also risk factors for a more severe COVID-19. So it could be that there are here two intersecting and mutually influencing pandemics. But the easel Lancet Liver Commission not only describes the burden of liver disease in Europe 
and the reason for them, but has used the data in this report to lay out a long-term vision for liver health in Europe with several panels of key actionable recommendations outlining how to move forward using these vision-oriented direction. And to be a bit more practical, I would like to give you really a, a personal example from my clinical experience. So in my daily work, and I'm working at a tertiary referral and liver transplant center, I'm daily confronted with many patients with end-stage liver disease, waiting for transplantation or having liver cancer. So what I do is I always ask my patient if they had had a liver test, this means a blood test for liver enzymes at some time um, in their lives. And usually there are two answers. So one is, I'm not aware that this has ever been tested or, oh yes, my liver enzymes have been elevated for 30 years, but only slightly. And I was told that nothing needs to be done. So this shows you that in all these years and often decades before, during which the disease developed to the point of decompensation and liver cancer, no specialized care and therapy took place. Although in most cases, therapy could have prevented this progression. Therefore, the commissioner being here with us today clearly call for a change in the management where we should focus on prevention and early diagnosis rather than treating only the end stages of liver diseases. And this prevention approach will require new working relationships with those engaged in the care of patients with liver disease, and it will require a patient-centered approach that eliminates stigma from liver disease. Prevention of liver disease complication, prevention of liver cancer is possible at all levels of policy and practice in Europe, my colleagues will tell you today. And with that, let's begin to hear what that might look like. And before introducing my esteemed guests sitting with me here today, let me run through some of the housekeepings. This live press conference is being recorded and will be available on either YouTube page shortly after it has ended. Today, we will be hearing brief remarks from all our speakers. Then I will open it up for questions from our media representatives attending today. I would like to ask all our journalists sitting in today to please mute themselves. And if you want to ask a question, please send it via the Q&A box and please indicate your media outlet and who you would like to direct your question to. We will then direct the question to the nominated panelist. If you want to ask a question verbally, please indicate it with a raised hand so we can turn on your microphone. And please keep your question brief. And please be aware that all information of this event is embargoed until 12 midday Central European time today. So, okay, let's begin. So it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce the first speaker. And our first speaker is Professor Michael Manns. He's the president of the Hanover Medical School, and he's a co-chair of the Easel Lancet Commission, and he will give you a brief overview on this project. So please, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, and uh, could we have the slides? Thank you very, very much. Uh, my name is Michael Manns, and uh, I thank Thomas Burke very much for the kind introduction. I am a co-chair of this project on Easel side, uh, together with Patricia Bora and Tom Carlson from Oslo. And uh, on the Lancet side is Richard Horton, the editor-in-chief, and Sabine Kleinert. And uh, we all work together as a multidisciplinary group over the last three years. Next slide, please. And um, as you can see, this is a real, real multitask and multidisciplinary approach. The title is the Easel Lancet Liver Commission, protecting the next generation of Europeans against liver disease complications and premature mortality. We have liver specialists, but also primary care physicians, diabetologists, surgeons, uh, specialists in addiction. All, uh, all faculties have been represented that contribute 
to this piece of work, which will be published officially today. Uh, next slide, please. We come from a field where we have masterpieces of translational research of modern medicine. Just one example is the hepatitis C story. The virus was discovered in 1989. It is responsible for liver cirrhosis and liver cancer uh, with a pandemic all over the world. And uh, for many, many years, it was- uh, A plane of campo. Pardon? For many years, it was untreatable. Uh, 25 years after the discovery of the virus, it became a treatable disease and we can cure hepatitis C now in almost every patient. And on the right side, you can see a publication from Dr. Carlson and Dr. Tucker in the Journal of Hepatology 2018, the year when we started the commission. And you see that research in hepatitis C is already declining. Uh, but research in other areas is increasing in liver disease uh, like Nuffield, like fatty liver disease. And you see that the commission is very, very timely. Next slide, please. Uh, this Lancet Easel Co Liver Commission is just the next step of an ongoing journal. On the Lancet side, there are other commissions covering other important topics of medicine. There was the UK Liver Commission, uh, but also the Easel has this HEPA health project that Dr. Booty will later allude to. And there's also HEPA map, the roadmap for hepatology research. And Easel is representing WHO Europe and addressing all the unmet needs in liver disease, which at the start of this project, we published in a small publication in The Lancet in 2018. Next slide. And what is very important that we are very proud that this publication now becomes official and becomes publicly available. And therefore today we have this official launch meeting. We planned it in Brussels. Unfortunately, we have to hold it online and you are most welcome to attend the official launch meeting uh, online today from 12 to 14 Central European time. Thank you very much for joining this press conference. I would like now to hand over to my co-chair, Tom Henning Carlson from Oslo. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. So it gives me again a, a big pleasure to introduce the next spe speaker. It's Professor Tom Henning Carlson, and he's research head at the Clinic of Surgery, Inflammatory Diseases and Transplantation of the University of Oslo and Oslo University Hospital, and of course, also a co-chair of the Easel Lancet Commission. Today, he will talk us um, through the key findings of the commission. So please, over to you, Tom, Professor Carlson. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. We can go directly to the next slide. And as Michael has already alluded to, this has been a big multidisciplinary project. There are not only liver doctors on this commission, there are other specialties, there are nurses, there are patients. And what I uh, wanted to do today, because the report is too big to go comprehensively through, so I will just show you some very few highlights, and I would also like to show you the structure of the report so that it will help you in reading and following up uh, after this press conference and after the launching event. So the next slide. You can see here um, a key part of the report uh, are data. There are novel analysis coming from many, many sources. We have data from WHO. We have data from the Global Burden of Disease Study. We have data from OECD. Uh, so uh, I encourage you to look into all of those data because they are the basis of the discussions that we do in the Commission. This is just one example. And the important point here is on the y-axis of this graph, where you can see that these are working life lost in the age groups of 15 to 64 years. And as you can see here, liver disease is now second only to ischemic heart disease when it comes to working life lost in Europe. So liver disease is a killer of young people. And that's why this commission has um, quite consistently put the emphasis exactly on the next generation of Europeans. Next slide, please. A major problem um, um, in liver disease is stigma. 
And we put great emphasis to have the people with liver disease represented in our commission. There are even co-authors on the reports. The patients are a part of this project. And uh, we think that uh, uh, the problem of stigma is very much related to the risk groups of liver disease, often socioeconomic disadvantage group, often related to unhealthy alcohol consumption, often related to uh, 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 drug uh, injection. Um, and this stigmatization leads to exactly the behavior that Thomas Berg alluded to in his introduction. People are hesitant in seeking help. They don't go see the doctor and they don't talk about their risk behaviors. And this leads to delayed health. It also uh, resides a, a responsibility on doctors in this uh, 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 dimension, because even in medical nomenclature, uh, we have stigmatizing terms. So we have to start with ourselves and then work to overcome this stigmatization to help our patients seek care at an appropriate time. Next slide, please. And uh, there is a big part of the report dealing with healthcare. And I think it's to be said in one uh, figure, what is really the main message. And Thomas Berg already alluded to it. It's what you see on the right side of this figure. At the moment, liver disease is dealt with when it's too late. We're doing liver transplants. We're doing hospital-based medicine, which is good. But to move uh, towards uh, effective prevention, effective therapies, which are now available, as Michael Manns alluded to, we have to get our patients into the health system at a much earlier stage and ideally uh, exert effective preventive actions so that the liver disease can uh, be stopped or even uh, prevented. Next slide, please. Uh, much responsibility of uh, acting on the recommendation also reside with politicians. Um, and what we do uh, in the report is to show what are the political actions that are needed uh, related to health policy, related to reimbursement, uh, related to pricing. And we give the data to show that what will result from our recommendation is not only a benefit for the people with liver disease, that's of course the most important thing, but there are also economic benefits to be gained from implementation of our proposed uh, vision. And this is just an example from hepatitis C that if the program that we propose is implemented, you would actually see that economic benefits would be realized in a uh, 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 quite near future. And with that, I would hand over, next slide please, to uh, my co-chair, Patricia Bora, to talk about the recommendations. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Professor Carlson. Thank you, Tom. So our next speaker I would like to introduce is Professor Patricia Bura. And Patricia is also a co-chair of the Easel Lancet Commission, and she is head of the Department of Gastroenterology at the University of Padua in Italy. And the commission has made some very powerful and urgent recommendations that have the potential to impact on the liver disease epidemic. So Patricia will run us through those today. So please, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Tom Michael. Um, the next slide, please. I would like to welcome all of you journalists that are listening to us. And uh, as you have uh, already seen, uh, uh, we are trying to condense a little bit uh, what has been done in the last few years uh, as a commission. And uh, this is the list of uh, the recommendations uh, that we would like to really target the primarily healthcare providers. And uh, you can really read carefully each one of those uh, for your report, I guess. Uh, so let me start with the, the first one, implementation of standardized and simple liver blood tests for earlier detection and prompt care. Uh, the Secretary General of ESOL already uh, gave you some examples uh, uh, from, uh, the, from, the, from, the, from the population about that. Utilization of opportunities created by the hepatitis B and C drugs, as well as hepatitis B and A vaccines to achieve viral hepatitis elimination in Europe. You know how much we are working for the hepatitis C at the moment. 
then increase awareness and provide financial incentives for primary care peers and professionals. Uh, note that non-viral liver diseases uh, must be classified along with other non-communicable diseases to engage appropriate care models. Please consider that all forms and services of stigma towards people at risk of or with liver disease must be opposed. Relevant changes to the medical nomenclature should come first. The next slide. And uh, more than that, public disclosure of prices for antiviral drugs throughout Europe would reinforce the WHO and the World Health Assembly resolution to improve fairness and market prices. As far as the alcohol uh, uh, is concerned, European governments must introduce uniform policies to reduce the harmful use of alcohol. And a complete social and digital media ban on the marketing of alcohol and ultra processed high fat and high sugar foods targeted in particular to children. Promote industry led food reformulation and minimization of social inequities by subsidizing healthy foods. EU and European governments should prioritize the harmonization of medical forms of public health interventions and health-related policies across Europe. The next slide. And I think to summarize what uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Michael Manns and Professor Tom Carson just said, and together with all the commissioners uh, that have been working in this uh, uh, commission together with ESOL and Lancet. This is, let's say, a sort of a final message. We would like to work all together to harmonize uh, health systems and health policy in Europe. And this is going to be this picture, next picture, the cover of the Lancet issue with the report of the commission. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Patricia. And as I mentioned earlier, the new approach being proposed by the Commission will involve a new deal of, also for patients. So I'd now like to introduce George Kalamatis. And George Kalamatis is the president of the Liver Patient International, the LPI, and to please give us his views on the Commission's findings. So please, George. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, this is an extremely important um, situation that we have right now. I think um, um, the, the, the fact that, you know, there's, um, there's so many people, uh, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people that are affected with liver diseases in the European level and within European countries is something that has been neglected for years and it is important um excuse me uh it, they have been neglected for many years and um the fact that this has become now a um a, a priority and has been become a, an issue that uh, is being included in in the agenda is something extremely promising for the for the next years um uh, Regarding the, the the plans, uh, I think it is extremely also uh, interesting that um, uh, patient's voice has been heard, and uh, demands of the community, and the fact that um, um, marginalized populations have been included also is extremely important, and uh, I think that um, uh, with all these efforts, we will um, be able to. Um, screen, find, test, and link to care uh, more individuals in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, George. And um, of course, the, the focus of the ESL Lancet Commission is on liver disease in Europe, and its findings are squarely directed at EU policymakers. 
So our final two speakers will address this aspect of the commission work. And firstly, it's my privilege and pleasure to introduce Pietro Fiocchi. Pietro Fiocchi is a member of the European Parliament from Italy to give his perspective. So please, Pietro. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I'm uh, really delighted to be here because uh, I think that uh, it's still important to provide uh, some thoughts. Uh, sorry. Some thoughts on the, what are the perspective of the fight against cancer and in particular liver cancer or liver disease uh, in Europe uh, uh, in this moment. Now, first of all, congratulations to the uh, European Association on the study for liver diseases and uh, for the report from Lancet because it was a, a very important document uh, that uh, we used uh, inside uh, the discussion into the BECA committee. Now, as a member of BECA, of course, uh, I'm uh, looking at all form of uh, cancer, not only liver, not only liver diseases, uh, but of course, from a personal point of view, uh, I, I come from a history in which my mother-in-law uh, got a liver disease uh, from hepatitis A, and they went through a cancer, uh, um, a liver transplant and everything else that eventually died after 10 years. So I'm, I'm very familiar with the problem. And uh, uh, in my opinion, it, it is very important to focus on uh, this type of diseases. Uh, now, the BECA committee uh, is pushing, and I have to say I'm, I'm very satisfied uh, for the uh, good uh, construction mood that we had uh, all among uh, all the nations and all the political groups uh, regarding what we have to do to fight cancer in Europe. Uh, the goal, uh, which is quite uh, impressive uh, to reduce uh, 3 million deaths by cancer by 2030 is quite uh, important. But uh, uh, as an entrepreneur and as a very pragmatic uh, person, uh, I need to uh, give you some indication of what are the problems and what are the, 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 the potential possibilities to, uh, to uh, achieve uh, some of these results. Um, as a personal comment, uh, you know, we are talking about 3 million less death by cancer by 2030. Unluckily, from a public perception, uh, and, and I would like to uh, mention a phrase by Stalin of all the people, in which you say that, that the death of a human being is a tragedy, the death of three million people is statistics. And uh, in my opinion, this is very important because, uh, okay, it is statistics, but uh, uh, as it was mentioned before, uh, it's also statistics from a point of view of uh, economics because we understand very well, uh, and uh, I've seen the graph uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, the cost uh, of uh, liver diseases in Europe, uh, summing up to even to 100 billion euros. But if you put together all the cost of all the cancer in Europe, you're looking at three, 400 billion euros. So from this point of view, the big fight uh, inside the bigger committee and inside the commission is to get uh, sufficient funds and sufficient action uh, to fight these incredible diseases. And uh, it's, it's obvious that uh, you have a, a return on investment. I'm sorry if I use uh, a, a in entrepreneur time of terms, but uh, in incredible terms of investment on uh, recuperating this type of uh, uh, problem. Now, uh, I'm very happy that uh, when you open up uh, the ESRL uh, 
open letter. I, I signed it. It is extremely important uh, what you do and what you want to do. And uh, it's extremely important to put pressure on the political establishment, uh, but also on the national government so that they go in the right direction. Uh, I know that several MEPs uh, are supporting this. And I just mentioned uh, uh, my friend uh, uh, Busoy, but not only that. But again, uh, we are facing a lot of incredible challenges in Europe uh, regarding uh, uh, cancer in general, but liver diseases in particular. Yeah. Uh, number one, uh, you already mentioned uh, COVID-19 uh, has had uh, a devastating effect on non-COVID pathologies because uh, uh, I can only mention, for example, the Italian case in which uh, uh, 3 million screenings were delayed or canceled in 2020 with respect to 2019. And not to mention all the therapies or the surgical intervention regarding cancer. So, and, and I believe this is the case uh, all across Europe. So really COVID uh, has been a, a disaster on one side uh, in terms of uh, curing and uh, catching the cancer in the early stage. Uh, but on the other hand, I think it was a, a very good signal uh, to all the national health administration to modify their uh, mode of operations. You know. Another comment that I can say that there are a lot of equality, inequalities in Europe. In the, because you see that uh, there are regions in which they uh, screen uh, uh, risk factor subject uh, up to 90%, and there are other regions in which they do not screen at all. And uh, been uh, recently in, uh, in Bulgaria, and uh, especially in the rural areas, there's no screening uh, or no access to any type of therapies at all. So this is a, an extremely big problem. And I think uh, as, a, as a member of the committee, the European Commission should focus on uh, uh, giving the screening all across Europe on all the oncological uh, pathologies. And liver is one of them. Now, uh, there are still a lot of bureaucratic obstacles and uh, practical obstacles for the free circulation of patients across Europe. And uh, I refer especially to the rare cancer of the pediatric cancers uh, or pediatric uh, uh, pathologies. Um, we still have a lot of problems sending the patients to the center of excellences all across Europe. And this should be fixed even though there is a directive that says that there is a free circulation of patients, we know very well that there are a lot of problems going across uh, the borders to get the best possible care or the best possible diagnosis. And again, not enough education. I don't know the situation in other member states, but in Italy, they do not spend uh, even one hour in the entire uh, education uh, uh, cycle from elementary, medium school, uh, and uh, high school uh, regarding health and uh, lifestyle and uh, healthy diets prevention. Uh, there are still a lot of uh, obstacles uh, regarding creating a comprehensive uh, EU database which in my opinion will be fundamental to actually uh, get to the point because I, I see it as, as an engineer, I see it uh, two ways. Number one, if, if you do have a database of 600 million European citizens, you do have a much better database uh, to understand uh, what is the best uh, way to treat uh, the different type of pathologies. And number two, of course, uh, you also understand uh, which are the centers uh, uh, all across Europe, which are the best uh, possible uh, 
uh, therapies to cure or prevent uh, or uh, do whatever they need to do uh, to achieve uh, again uh, the goal uh, by the European uh, Commission to reduce uh, by 3 million deaths by 2030. There are still, uh, again, a lot of problems regarding uh, uh, the problem of using in an efficient way <clears throat> the EU funds for research and modern technology in screening and in therapies and so on. Uh, the money is there because we have seen it in, in the resilience plan that uh, the, the European Commission has given a lot of money to do research. Now, how um, do you use Pietro, Pietro, sorry to interrupt you. Um, we have to come to the Q&A session. Oh, I, so, I, I, I come uh, very close to a... To a thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much. In the, the last point, uh, you still have a lot of uh, member states uh, which do not have, uh, or if they have, uh, they have not implemented the National Cancer Plan or any type of plan on a specific disease. So this is uh, the situation. We have a lot of work to do. Uh, there is a strong push by the European Commission, by the Baker Commission to do everything. And we need all the help also from you to achieve the results. Again, uh, my warmest congratulations. Thank you for the opportunity to address you all today. And uh, I am available for any initiative uh, or any pressure you want to put uh, and because we need to get the results. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. And really, thank you for all your help and for your very kind words. To give our journalists perhaps some background information, you mentioned you're part of the Becker team. This is a beating cancer plan from the EU. It's really a huge and very impressive initiative to beating all cancers in Europe. And Maria Buti may um, allude on that, that um, so far liver cancer was not part of this uh, prevention plan but we sent a letter to the EU and Pietro was very supportive um, to that, um, to consider including liver cancer as a preventable disease, uh, perhaps more easily preventable disease as many other cancers. And this we can um, perhaps um, yeah, further discuss um, in a couple of minutes. So our final speaker, um, today is Professor Maria Buti, and Maria Buti is the Director of Hepatology in Journal Medicine at the Hospital um, Universitario Valdebron in Barcelona. She is the EU, um, the EASL European and Policy Councillor, and hand over to you, Maria, for your comments to the Commission. Thank you, Thomas. Now is the time for action to improve liver health and protect the young European against uh, liver disease complications and premature death. The risk factors for liver disease, such as alcoholism, obesity, and intravenous drug use, reflects behaviors and conditions that are the consequence of an unhealthy environment and social inequities. A number of our recommendations are oriented toward creating health policies and informing healthcare providers. The Commission uh, recommends uh, the national governments and European institutions introduce effective uniform policies to reduce harmful alcohol use. Specifically, we recommend implementation of a minimum price for alcohol and this measure must be accompanied by appropriate increase in alcohol taxation. To tackle associated liver uh, disease, uh, to tackle obesity associated liver disease, we recommend avoiding consumption of unhealthy food. An example is uh, ultra processed foods, uh, which in addition to salt, uh, sugar and fats include artificial flavors, colors, sweeteners, and other additives. Marketing on alcohol and high sugar and high salt food and drinks has recognized deleterious impact on children. We 
call for a ban on this practice in all social and digital media, including marketing messages to mobile phones. The experience from the tobacco industry has shown that the only effective means to protect children is through our complete ban of marketing of these products. Nonetheless, uh, the measures to target alcohol and obesity are often opposed by commercial interests that prioritize profit over health. Policy actions for marketing, pricing, and taxation of alcohol and unhealthy food can reduce the incidence of liver disease and save the lives of almost 300,000 people per year across Europe. Many of these measures are also important for preventing cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and other conditions. On this line, uh, ISEL has an ongoing project that is called EPA Health 2 that analyzes the impact of these uh, health policy interventions in, in liver disease in four different European countries. A considerable focus is placed in this commission on underserved and marginal communities, including early diagnosis and management of liver disease and children. And we provide proposals on how to better uh, target disadvantaged communities through our health prom promotion disease pro prevention and health care using uh, multi-level interventions acting on current uh, barriers. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the fragmentation and variability of disease prevention policies across Europe. The WHO goals for uh, eliminating viral hepatitis in, uh, in 2030 uh, requires promoting screening programs, access to diagnostics, testing, and treatment. And in this sense, ISEL is organized a viral hepatitis elimination conference in Brussels in 2022. So many liver diseases are preventable. This is an important message and an opportunity for designing public health strategies uh, targeting lifestyle social and environmental factors. In the end, these strategies will lower the incidence of liver disease and save lives. I would like to finish saying now it's time to action. Thanks. Yes, thank you, Maria. Thank all of you. And the floor is now open for, for questions. So please um, use the Q&A um, button or raise your hand if you want to ask something. Um, maybe I can start, Tom, with you. I think we mentioned that uh, chronic liver disease, you know, are quite often long lasting and the importance of the early diagnosis. So what do you think is the current system of liver disease diagnosing and, and treatment, diagnosis and treatment in Europe? what needs to be improved or is it already on a good level or is there a, a missing link? What do you think are the issues here? I think that what we as liver doctors, and this has become very clear in this project, has to do is to uh, tell our colleagues uh, in primary care uh, who see liver patients, but who often neglect uh, mild abnormalities in liver biochemistry tests. Uh, and we have to talk to our colleagues in uh, diabetology, in cardiology, who see patients with diabetes and patients with obesity, uh, and to tell them uh, to, to not forget about the liver and to include liver assessments in the follow-up of the patients. And I think that uh, possibly uh, uh, when it comes to the uh, healthcare provider recommendations of this report, uh, the, the most important message is coming, coming from us as hepatologists to the other med medical specialists, and we're providing them with the tools to do that. Very simple tools, 
It doesn't cost a lot of money. It's not very difficult to do. And it's very clear what is stated in the report. How are these uh, uh, people with liver disease going to be identified at an earlier stage? And um, what are the pathways of care needed to, to prevent and to treat the liver disease? Yeah, um, thank you very much. And, and you mentioned costs. And also, this was part of the, the talk of, of Pietro Fiocchi. And therefore, um, we, we said, and this is also a, a topic or kind of a, a theme of this paper, that it will prevent also, or it will give a clue to the health of, of European populations, the young population in the future. So perhaps a question to you, Patricia and Michael, what else does it mean if you tell a patient, for instance, that he had a liver disease with these early interventions, could it also improve the general health of the patient? So is um, yeah, the, the elevated liver enzyme only the candle that light us the, the path to, to a better health of, of the population? Yeah, if I may start, uh... Uh, I think uh, we have made significant progress in various areas of liver disease. I think uh, we have to acknowledge that there are many liver diseases. Of course, there's obesity, there's addiction, there's alcoholism, but we have many, many rare liver diseases. And the patient individually is suffering from these diseases 100%. I made the example of hepatitis C, but also hepatitis B can be controlled. And there are still too many patients which have not access throughout Europe to these therapies that we have available. And I think the prerequisite is that we really diagnose liver disease and the so-called liver test, they cannot tell us which type of liver disease is underlying this elevation. This uh, so-called liver test, ALT, just tells us that there are more liver cells dying than normal, but it doesn't tell us why. And here again, we made significant progress in diagnostics to diagnose hepatitis B, hepatitis C, uh, hepatitis A, E, and also autoimmune liver disease. Um, and we can diagnose a lot without doing a liver biopsy now. Yeah. And therefore, uh, we have to bring the attention to the primary care physicians. Yeah, that's a clear statement. And, and Patricia, what, are, what do you think are the next steps on the road of prevention? And what are the key things yeah. um, that need to happen? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Thomas, for raising this question. Um, I believe that uh, uh, as uh, uh, professionals, medical doctors overall, not only medical doctors, should really find the right way to inform the general population. Uh, we try to talk not to patients, but before that. For the prevention, we need to talk to, to the general population with different categories. There are some problems and risk factors for the, for the, for the youth. Uh, we talk to children and adolescents, and then uh, we have to talk to different, different, different categories, in which way probably uh, we are missing uh, overall in Europe uh, the communication. MEP Pietro Fiocchi said that uh, he realized uh, in his country, which is my country too, that there are no specific education or part in the, in the, in the, in the school uh, to dedicated to the young uh, 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 population to be informed about the risk factors. Uh, when, uh, when Pietro was talking about the cancer and, and Isol has uh, this great uh, uh, role now to, to, to fight against the uh, liver cancer, but the population is scared about the word cancer, but they don't know that uh, even the, the, if you have the steatosis of the liver, if you have the diabetes, this is uh, increase the risk of cancer. If you have uh, the obesity in the adolescent, this is increasing the risk of cancer when it's uh, in, in his adulthood. So I think it's the information to the general population and the way and the wording that us as medical doctors and hepatologists we really use it to make understand what is really the risk. Yeah, thank you very much, Patricia. There's a question coming from Sarah Lewis. She's a freelance journalist based in Brussels. And perhaps a question to, to you, Tom, but or to all of you, do you rec recommend governments, EU makes food reformulation mandatory, or should these measures be self-regulatory? Do you have an answer to that? I think this is a very uh, a clever question. I think it's about collaboration. And I think that's what we urge for in the paper, 
uh, food wave formulation obviously have a big impact on uh, uh, the, the, the occurrence of uh, the diseases that we're talking about. This is very clear from the OECD data. But I think this, is not, this, this, this has to be done in a collaboration, and it's already being done by the industry. So I think it's, it's as for many other areas, we need to, 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 to get a constructive collaboration and a constructive dialogue with industry. And I think that uh, uh, they will come along seeing the rationale and the data that are being provided. So I think it's a, it's a mutual responsibility, and that's what we're communicating. Yeah. Um... There's an additional question coming from Sarah Lewis um, related to the, the ban um, of food marketing to children. So how do you define a child? Is it under the age of 18? And how do you define marketing to children? For example, they watch and use media not specifically targeted at children. So Maria or Tom, do you have an idea? Maybe we can both comment. I think yeah. I think this is again a very complex question, and I think that there are already um, uh, uh, tools available. There's the WHO action on digital media marketing called Click. We talk about it in the paper, and I think what we're simply doing is to to, to urge for an implementation of those tools. Um, and I think uh, it links with the overall messaging of the commission that liver disease is a problem of the young population. And as Patricia Bora said, we have now a generation of Europeans being uh, exposed to these risk factors at very young ages. And that's going to become a problem for them. And that's what we're seeing in our data. So I think um, um, this whole new marketing ecosystem happening in digital media exposes children to alcohol marketing uh, which they wouldn't be exposed to otherwise. And I think to, to, for, the, for, the, for the governments to get uh, 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 somehow uh, uh, a regulatory role in, 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 in dealing with the digital marketing domain is, is going to be important. Uh, and for children in particular, because they are spending so much time in their digital media domain. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I agree. Issue. Yeah. I agree with, with, with Thomas. So it's difficult to define. It needs collaboration. But at the end, I think this is a very useful measure, not only for children, for everybody, and not only for liver disease, only for other diseases, are cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, and other, other conditions. So at the end, I think it's a, a very good measure at population level. It's a good intervention. Yes, thank you very much. So I would also like to, if to I, ask. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Thomas, if, if, if I can add something. We, we yes, please. The schools in Italy yep. convince the parents to, instead of giving the usual processed food, to give an apple or something to their children. There was incredible opposition. So uh, it's very difficult. I mean, we, we need to do more communication and more education on this because otherwise uh, there are even the parents that give their own food to their kids that go to school. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So I would like to ask also George, uh, our patient representative, a question. What do you think is really um, the biggest changes that need to be made? Um, also coming from this, this report. And are we seeing evidence that patient groups and people living with liver disease are being empowered or brought into the conversation? Is it that what is needed? Or where do you see the biggest need from a patient representative point of view? I think, well, thank you very much for this question because it's, uh, of course, it's a very nice question because it makes me think, you know, for, uh, in advance, the next years, what should be done in order for all these fantastic policies to have a, a real impact in uh, people's lives? Um, knowing the liver, these, uh, the liver patients for many years, I think the biggest barrier that we have experienced is for all these services or new technologies or better diagnostics or even better treatments or even new policies is to reach the, the significant populations that we are talking about. Um, of course, of course, it's not only viral hepatitis, but especially if, if we are, if we focus in viral hepatitis, we can actually admit 
that uh, the specific diseases influence marginalized populations and people that are have a significant low income status, people that live in prisons or people who inject drugs or people that are coming from countries with a bigger prevalence that are outside Europe. So reaching with our policies, uh, this population will be uh, and still remains a big challenge in the EU. And of course, before, because the previous talk that you had regarding policies and food, of course, um, this should be uh, a, a, a focus of everybody uh, in order to change, in order to change the field and the the, the habits of uh, so many million people, we need strong policies that will, of course, uh, respect human rights. This is also something very important that we need to take under consideration. And uh, last but not least, I think we should communicate more and try to understand what the peers and people who are in the ground level are saying to us and what are their needs in order to custom made services that will fulfill their needs. I think that's a... Yeah, well, I think we have to, to come to the end and therefore I would like to have a, perhaps a final comment from the MEP and Pietro, you mentioned, well, there are several problems. Problems was a, a quite often used word in, in, in your talk. And so it's a bit the awareness of the parliamentarians in the EU on liver disease and let's say on liver cancer in especially. Yeah? And, you know, in contrast to most of the cancers, solid cancers, we have a clear definition with liver cancer of the risk group. It's mainly I wouldn't say only patients with liver disease. So you do not have to do a surveillance in the whole population. You know, you can focus on those at risk, perhaps 10%. So being less costly. And I think we have very, very good evidence that early treatment, we have it for hepatitis B with a vaccination, treatment of hepatitis C, liver cancer disappear in these patient population. So is there awareness of what needs to be done to get really this message heard? Um, surely inside the, 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 the Baker Commission, uh, there is awareness. Uh, there is a strong push uh, to uh, uh, try to um, destroy the inequality so that uh, we have screening, all type of screenings uh, on only different type of diseases uh, uh, all across Europe. Uh, and this would be, in my opinion, a very good start. And uh, of course, uh, uh, as it was mentioned before, uh, the focus need to be on the rural areas and on the areas where the screening is not there, the therapies are out there and everything else. I do think there is a, a strong feeling that uh, this is the direction where we go. Now, uh, we will see if the commission will put the right money also for research and development and also for uh, putting political pressure on the member states because we know very well that uh, uh, the commission does not have a full power on the health policy side the member states. But we need to put political pressure on the member states so that uh, they, they will come up uh, to a much higher standards in terms of screening and in terms of therapies on uh, cancer in general, but on the liver diseases in particular. Yeah, thank you very much. So it's again my pleasure and privilege to, to conclude this session. I would like to thank you, the journalists, for your interest being here, joining our journey with the Easel Lancet Commission. And with a lot of afterlife that will create. Um, I thank very much all the commissioners for being here doing the work, the easel office and the patient representatives, and especially to you, Pietro Piocchi, for being here and joining um, our journey. If you have the journalist question and you want to have it face by face, please send a message to Michael Kessler and we will try to arrange it. And I will also um, brought to your attention, bring to your attention that we have at um, noon the official launch um, of this Easel Lancet Commission with a very important video message coming from the president 
of the EU Commission, Dr. Ursula von der Leyen. And um, please be aware of the ban, as I have mentioned. And with this, I would like to thank you again. Uh, wish you all the best. Please stay safe. And thanks for your interest. Bye-bye.